is Dwayne Huff, founder and CEO of Influence Seminars. And in this video, I want to talk about the importance of negotiating win-win outcomes, no matter what your role is in your company. I mean, if you're if you're in sales, if you're a sales VP, or if you're an executive, you understand the day-to-day -day importance of negotiating. You do it all day, you do it every day. But even if you're an HR professional, um, um, I'm drawing a blank on the specific things. I don't care what your role is. If you're an engineer, um, if you're an IT professional, whatever your profession is, there's some element, some very significant and important element of negotiating in what you do. Uh, but before I jump in here, if you feel like you or your employees or your company need professional development training for um, anybody in the company, reach out to me at influenceseminars.com and sign up for a free session. No matter what the topic is, whether it's sales training, customer service, leadership management, um, effective communication strategies, whatever it is, we can do a free session, a free one hour session. I'll do a lunch and learn virtually, or if you're in the area, I'll come out to your business and do it to add value to you and your company. And if for some reason you enjoy that process, we will talk about how we can potentially work together. But let me jump in here. Because and I'll, I'll paint a scenario for you. Um, I'm obviously in business for myself, and I, I go through a sales pro uh, process and proposing uh, for several different things. And I find myself right now in a situation, a competitive situation, where I'm competing for and proposing for new business. And um, it's it's not really a contract negotiation yet. It's not really even a pricing negotiation just yet, though the premise is there. And here's what I'll say about this. Uh, if you're a sales professional or a sales VP and I say negotiating, you, you probably cringe because you're thinking price. Price, money, dollars and cents is really only 10% or less of this particular negotiations and most negotiations, right? I mean, if you're trying to negotiate terms or agreements, or work schedules, or vacation time, or salary, or scope of work, or delivery, or just, it's just endless, you're negotiating. And it's in your best interest to be able to, it's, well, let me just say it this way. A, a CEO laid it down for me one time when he said, hey, before you teach my people negotiations, help them to realize it's how everyday business gets done. It's how everyday life gets done. It's all uh, the ebb and flow about how we conduct business and get life done. And so I'll set that premise there. But this particular negotiations, I think I can share a couple of things with you. I took some notes here about what's going on. So basically, the door was open through a referral for me to go in and submit a proposal um, to be able to get business that a current vendor has, but they would prefer another option, right? And so that's how it came to me. And so um, in order to, number one, not uh, minimize my value, decrease my value, or sell on price uh, alone, even though there's going to be a price element to this because uh, one of the things that I'm doing here and proposing is they basically said, listen, we just need to put a cost analysis in front of the CFO. He doesn't care how good it is. <laughs> he doesn't, you know, which I don't think is the greatest way to go about things, but he says it needs to make financial sense. So I can do some competitive analysis and understand where it needs to go. But at the end of the day, I have to make sure it's profitable for me, that I don't minimize my value, but still meet them where they are. So my whole premise um, in negotiating, whenever we go into any negotiation, we have to have two or three options, levels of this is the best I can possibly hope for, this is what I'm willing to accept, and this is the point where I've just got to walk away from the table because it's not going to be profitable or beneficial. Because the last thing we want to do is put ourselves in a situation where we compromised our value, we compromised our price, we, we sold on price, and then we're doing it for peanuts and the headache is still there. We want to avoid that at all costs. But we still want to be able to create a win-win um, a outcome. Some people don't like to say that word, but the mutually beneficial outcome. So that always have to be the driver because if we don't get this business, we want to build the relationship and save face in business for next time so that whenever the opportunity rises again, they'll either refer us or they'll hire us. And so this whole negotiation came down to a few things. Number one, uh, there's a misalignment on how we view um, how the, the training should be structured and priced. I, I think they're wanting to know on a course per course basis and uh, I'm needing to bid and propose on a day 
rate basis because I, I can't invest a day of my time or a week of my time uh, if, if the finances aren't in place, if the revenue isn't appropriate. So first and foremost, I have to understand where they are. And then I have to see how that's similar to what I'm asking and then connect the dots for them to show them, hey, you know, I understand that you guys normally price it this way and this is the quote you've got, but there's no difference in the particular offering prices, but it's how we're going to approach this, is how we're going to tailor things to meet your needs. It's how you're gonna be in control of saying, hey, Dwayne, here's what we need, here's the scope of work we need, here's the amount of time we need, and here's the number of participants that we need. And based on your proposal, what would you feel about doing this scope of work over this amount of time at this day rate? So when I do that, I come in, I come in with my three different tiers and I put a very easy softball clause, clause in there that says, hey, look, you know, based on the scope of work and availability and how much training you need me to do and what, what we're going to cover over a particular time, there are better pricing and discounts available. I know I said discounts. But I realize that with a larger scope of work, it's going to come out to be just as profitable for me as it would as if they did a one-off. So I have full flexibility uh, in, in what I do to be able to set those parameters. But what I am going to do is I'm going to set the bar high or high, and then I know where that acceptable is. And I'm going to completely avoid that walk away point because I don't want to be negotiating here. I want to be negotiating here, right? But first, I have to be able to get to the table with a proposal that aligns with their needs. So I need to seek first to understand, then be to understood, as Dr. Stephen Covey would say in his book, Seven Habits. Um, and then once I understand, align with that, connect the dots with them and help them to see how, li listen, I can do it the way you want. You always want to be able to meet them where they are. However, if you will allow me to propose it this way, what you see is you guys have full flexibility, full freedom agility, and full control over what we do. And at the time we're ready to make the final decision or the final contract negotiation, we put the parameters, the scopes, the, the investment forward. And then if we both can agree upon it, it truly is a mutual beneficial outcome. So here's a couple of things that I wrote down. Always seek mutually beneficial outcomes, whether you call them win-win or not. And some people would say, well, it's just not possible to get win-win all the time, and, and I agree. And, and there's an old East Texas saying that somebody shared with me. One of my mentors said, hey, Dwayne, a dog can whip a skunk, <laughs> but it ain't always worth it, right? And so sometimes you gotta walk away and be willing to walk away, which means you have to have alternatives. And I do have those alternatives. So if this doesn't work out, I still have potential for other business. So I don't have to go in there emotional. I don't have to go in there guarded. I don't have to go in there confrontational. I can go in there with an open mind, allowing it to play out the way that it needs to. I just have to be able to facilitate for those guys because their their experience in the past may not tell them, they may get skeptical by the fact that I'm so flexible and I have to work with that. Most of this proposal submitting and negotiation, by the way, is not happening face to face. It's happening uh, via email and via communication through a party that I met and have a favorable response with and a referral who knows me and knows I do good work and who's my champion inside. But I still have to approach it very carefully, very patiently, meeting them where they are. Uh, the other thing I said or wrote down is understand their process and where they're coming from first. You always want to make sure you fully understand. If you don't, really dig in, really ask questions so that you can clarify because you might have that light bulb moment. In this particular situation, I was going back and forth with the referral party and I'm like, yeah, I get what you're saying here, but I'm trying to throw a softball. Here's the scenario. Imagine this. And then finally that referral source says, oh, okay, I get it. Sometimes the biggest, hardest part of negotiating is, is being able to align and communicate in a way that both of you get each other so that the walls come down. Um, and speaking of which, whether it's this um, topic or any other uh, topic that increases influence and impact, soft skills and professional development, if you will, if you need some of that for your organization, run over to influenceseminars.com. Fill out the form that'll allow you to get a free training session. If I'm in the area, I'll come out to your business and do a, a lunch and learn or a one or two hour session free of charge. Um, or if, if um, you're live here, we can do it virtually. And uh, on my website, there's tons of training you can check out uh, free of charge. So check that out. Uh, the next thing was 
Then connect, align, and differentiate the value that you're trying to provide in the way that you're proposing it. But at the end of the day, if that doesn't work out, the next thing I said is ask them exactly where they need to be, where you need to be, and how you need to present and propose or align with what their expectations are. The most powerful question in a negotiation is, what do you want? Or some softer version of that. But if you don't have a relationship of trust and connection with that person, that's going to be a very difficult question to ask. So you got to establish all negotiations is negotiating with who? People. So if we're not aligned with the people, it's going to show resistance very quick. So we got to make sure that that's the foundation. They got to know our heart. They got to know our intention. And they got to know that if we're going to ask questions like, what do you want? In fact, after 10 years of teaching negotiation, here's the one sticking point I see with more and more people in negotiation. They don't mind giving and allowing people to understand and to know what their objectives, what their goals are, as long as you know they're protecting, keeping it close to the best and not compromising themselves. But they, they make the fatal mistake of, of saying, hey, what do you want? Before they say, hey, let me start. Here's the goal. Here's the objective. Here's why we're working with you. Here's what we're looking for. Can you help me to understand a little bit better what you guys want or what you're looking for? If you give first, you activate the law of reciprocity, you lower the walls, and they're willing to open up. So if you'll simply clarify, hey, you know, I'll do whatever it is that you need to make this look good on paper for your CFO or, or for your department or for your boss. I just need to understand what that's supposed to look like. Can you give me an example or can you walk me through it? Again, it's not easy, but it takes it takes patience, but you can do this if you really, really um, are committed to helping mutual understanding take place first. And then finally, again, protect your value and your price. And uh, the way that you do that is making sure you go in there with many alternatives and options and giving, well, actually I wouldn't go in there with more than two or three because then you'll confuse people and they'll never make a decision. But if you will simply lay out for them the benefits, not to you, but to them of what you're proposing and how it's going to play out, how it's gonna make their life, life easier, better, less stressful. It's gonna make them look good to the people that they report to, to their board, to the stakeholders. Um, and, and, and you spend your time fighting as hard for their win and their outcome as you do your own. Let me tell you what, every negotiation that you have is gonna come out super fantastic. And if I can be of service and helping you do that, run over to influenceseminars.com, fill out the form to get a complimentary session. I can do it live or virtual depending on where you are. And we can look at any topic that matters to you in the area of influence, communication, and even leadership. So um, I hope this has served you. If it has, drop a comment below um, and let me know your thoughts. Or if you have a question about this topic or any other topic, please do this there. And if it added value to you, please share it with your network. I'd be honored to serve. And uh, the reason I do this is because it helps get the word out about what I do. I serve in the process. And if we happen to do business as a result of it, that would be an added bonus. Have a great day, guys. Talk soon.